it's like 15,000 bucks. And I was like, holy shit. So I called, the guy called me and I just told him, I was like, hey, I don't know dick about farming. I don't know dick about hops. I just like beer. I would like to do hops. We got space in our backyard. He's like, well, you're set up for failure. I was like, okay, cool. But he's like, but if you're still interested, call this guy. So he gave me the number of this other guy. He works at Penn State. And I guess he's like a free consultant for hops or whatever. And he called me on Friday and we talked for a little while. And he said that like the hops will grow out here. He's like, if you're willing to set it up, like they should grow. But he told me about I got to get a soil test, a soil sample done. You send that into Penn State too? Um, you just go to the Mercer County Courthouse and they basically give you like a little bag and an envelope. Mm-hmm. And then you go around your yard and you like, you get a five gallon bucket. And then you fill it up with dirt in like various different spots around your yard. And then you send it to them and then they do a test. Send it to who? You send it to Penn State Soil yeah, Lab. Yeah, Penn State Soil Lab. Yeah. I knew then, somebody who works there. Yeah, and then they yeah. do like a little analysis and they'll be like, oh, you got a pH, you got a whatever, you got a blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, okay, you're either a thumbs up or thumbs down. But I'm kind of excited about it. Won't it take a long time to produce? Like if you if you were to plant this autumn, this fall, does don't hops take a really long time to grow? Uh, first year, you get thirty uh, percent yield. Yield. Second year, you get seventy percent yield, and then third year, you get a hundred percent yield. So okay. what does that mean? Like, what, yeah, what does that mean? I'm not a farmer either. So what does that mean? Say you planted an apple tree and say the most apples you can get in a year is 100 apples. Well, year one, you're going to get 30 apples. Year okay. two, you're going to get 60 apples. And year three, you're going to get 100 apples. All right. All right. So I love like, it. Break it down like that. I get you. I'm on the So it's thing. like the goal is to get 100 apples every, every, every fucking year. But in reality, you're probably going to get like between 98. Or you, you might even get like 80%. It might get 80 apples. Hello, sir. I'd like to buy 20 hops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens is I guess there's like a whole bunch of stuff like after you grow them and then you have to process them and like you have to pelletize them and all that shit. And it basically all of that costs money. And the guy told me, he's like, well, it's really expensive. You're not going to start making money for at least three years. And I was like, well, I plan on living at least 10. So it <laughs> sounds like I'm going to break even. He's like, yeah, yeah, you'll definitely break even if you just keep at it. But just so you know, it's kind of expensive to start. But, I mean, it's not, like, out of the realm of possibility. I mean, it's like the cost of a cheap car to, like... And plus, plus Meredith is really into this stuff, too. So yeah, like, she's, like, really into it. So, you guys, it's going to be, like, a thing. Like, you could be... You could be, it could be like, a It could be Green thing. Acres. It could be Green Acres. You guys could start your own hop farm, and you could sub- supply the local breweries, and... Yeah, I was thinking about that, actually. So, hopefully, um, we make enough hops that you guys could, like, use them. It'd be fun, like, if you guys tried to use them to make beer. That would be fun. And then maybe when something else becomes a little more legal in this state, then grows. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be ideal if we could set it up. So, that way, we have all the farming equipment. And then, say, we want to start doing other stuff. Like, it would be... Basically, a way to kind of get into farming. You know? So is that like your life goal, farming? My life goal is to quit my job sometime before I'm like, I don't want to retire from my job. I'd like to quit my job. Like to do farming? To do anything else. <laughs> to do <laughs> like, anything else. I mean, like, farming, like, it sounds great, like, working for yourself and, like, doing farming and making money. And that's still, like, work. It's still a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah but it doesn't require job. me to sit in my basement all fucking day. And, like, stare at an Excel spreadsheet. But I thought you loved doing that. Not, no. I kind of do, but if I could do anything else, I would. I don't know, it just gets old when you do the same thing for, like, ten years. It's like, I don't know, it pays the bills, but I don't want to... I don't know if I could do other stuff. It would be more fun. Like, if I could just build, like, skate ramps all day, like, that would be fun. I don't know, I think I just want to be outside more. And the problem is, what my job has for me that involves being outside involves being on the side of the fucking highway and that sucks so so you're gonna gonna buy like a real tractor like a legit tractor to like overalls with a piece of hay sticking out of his mouth oh yeah we could become like real farmers that would be that would be awesome and the cool thing about like if you set up all the infrastructure and you have like a farm that's like operational 
one, you can like hire people. And this guy, uh, Steve from, it's not a racist comment. It's a, like an actual comment. He said, it's so hard to find Mexicans who will only work your fields for two months. Especially <laughs> now. They all got kicked out of the country. <laughs> well, he's like, it's just so hard. He's like, you know, picking these things by hand is just crazy. I mean, we always are running out of Mexicans to do this work for us. And I was like, dude, is that racist? He's like, no, they are from Mexico. Like, that's who they are. They are like, but they, they he's like, they know how to like crop and they know how to do like farming and stuff. But anyway, yeah, man, you could be a farmer. Get that, get those nice juicy government subsidies. Become a real farmer. There you go. You yeah. know, if you like qualify your land as like farmland, then it's like tax totally different too. There's like a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of benefits if you can set up your land to be like agriculture instead of residential. <clears throat> What's the zoning like in the municipality where you live? Is there an issue behind that before you? Drop fifteen grand on becoming a farmer. Is that something you need to look into? Yeah, it's it's all on the list. Okay. This guy sent me like a little checklist. But step one was you got to get the soil tested and figure out if it's going to grow. He basically said it would grow, um, and then I think you're allowed to. There's like a whole legal side to it too. You have to like set up like an LLC, and if you're going to like actually sell stuff, and if you want to do like taxes and like all that bullshit. How much property do you have? <laughs> Uh, we have six acres. Six acres? But uh, they usually only do like one or two acres. He said like one acre is probably the most any like family could do. He's like, but if you have like help. <clears throat> I love this. Quote, unquote, help. <laughs> if you have help, he's like, then you can do as much as you want. But he said it's really labor intensive. And like they, you got to do like a lot of spraying because I guess there's like all kinds of like Japanese beetles and like all kinds of bugs and yeah. stuff. Is, like, the gold eventually, like, start planting, like, real crops, like, corn and, like... Real crops? What's the difference between a real crop and a fake crop? Because you can ingest just straight... You can just ingest those crops. Hops, you gotta do something to it to... You can eat a hop. I've, I've eaten hops. Have you... Is it, is it any good? I bet it's bitter it's as fuck. It's kind of like oats. Can you, you ever eaten an can, oat? Can your kid legally eat a hop? Sure, you can. Yeah, why not? There's no alcohol on a hop. I yeah, don't I don't know. I don't know the process. You have to mash it and ferment it. There's a whole process behind it. But like, as it's your not goal, like a marijuana. Is your <laughs> yeah. Well, just so you know, like in the beer making process, and Pilak like explained this to me. In the beer making process, the hops are the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper here. <laughs> salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Uh, but like, is your goal to like eventually like not have to like go grocery shopping most of the time to be like have your own food that you store and you're like. Uh oh, uh oh, SpaghettiOs. Uh, like, yeah, that would be awesome, actually. Like, eventually, you're gonna get like chickens. You think you're gonna get chickens? You know, our neighbor has chickens, and they all got eaten by a raccoon. A raccoon actually got into the chicken nest and ate them all. Well, I didn't really eat them, but they like destroyed them all. I've, but like our one neighbor, they're like all about farming. Like, but their land, they actually guy actually told me he's like, oh. he's like, dude, if I had your land, I would have so much shit. And I was like, I want to have shit. He's like, I like shit. He's like peach trees. He's like, buy a bunch of fucking peach trees. He's like, do you ever buy a dozen peaches? I was like, no. He's like, you know why? Because they're expensive. You should grow peaches and sell that shit. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Well, where we live, I mean, it's not like Georgia. Georgia's known for their peaches because you can grow them all the fucking time because the climate in Georgia is a lot different than northwest Pennsylvania. So I feel like... How much yield are you going to get from peaches when there's such a short window of opportunity to grow and harvest peaches? Well, you know what's interesting is the – and I'm not an expert, but I've just been doing a lot of Googling while I take my More boots. of an expert than anybody else sitting at this table. Yeah. Well, all I'm going to say is um, Alaska – so I was in Alaska and you know they have like – always sun in the summer and then like always right s- yeah but it's like when do sh- when does shit grow like when it's sunny so it's like the hours of sunlight in certain areas are like so much greater so like mm-hmm. even though like we're in pa we're a lot further north than georgia so like obviously georgia is known for its peaches but it's like you can still grow things here it's a shorter window but the intensity of the sun is – the duration of the sun is longer yeah. because the sun is higher for longer in this area during – does that make – No, it, I does, make, it Am does. I making sense? Yeah, yeah. Like the volume of sun 
in the north versus the south, it can like kind of be it's a little bit closer together. Like you said, Georgia is known for peaches. Like Florida is known for oranges, and I thought our area was known for tomatoes. I had I had heard that somewhere. Yeah, I thought like, that's why they made Heinz. Heinz settled in the Pittsburgh area because our soil was so great for growing tomatoes. Well, last summer I went to California. We ain't got shit on California <laughs> as far as tomatoes go. The fucking tomatoes that that state produces is asinine. Well, is it because California is the size of the eastern seaboard? Is it like, are you talking about tons of tomatoes? I drove nine hours in a car from San Jose to Anaheim. And until we got to L.A., all I saw... Oh, wait, wait, wait. San Jose to Anaheim. That's only two hours. uh, No, it's six. It's six hours, not nine. Six. Drive oh, 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 okay, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. I, I, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was thinking of San Diego. Okay. No, yeah. no, not San Diego. We drove from San Jose. To like San Francisco, San Francisco to LA. Yeah. To LA. It's like. Yeah, I guess, because San Jose is a little north, a little south of San Francisco, and Anaheim's a little south of LA. Right, regardless, okay, I understand. Okay. I got you. I just, you. just the hours and hours of driving in a car on either side of us was nothing but fucking tomatoes for hours. Oh, right. Like, as far as the eyes could see. There were some other fruit trees for a while, but just the tomatoes was was nonsense. Nonsense. Mm. And the trucks loaded up, just spilling them on the highway. They didn't even give a damn. But... Where do they make Heinz ketchup now? They don't make it in Pittsburgh Mexico. Anymore. Fucking Mexico. They make it in Mexico. Mm. Is it taxed? NAFTA, baby. <laughs> NAFTA. I hope we're getting rid of that. Yeah, well. Sounds then, so disappointed. That's neither here nor there. Then your yeah. ketchup will get more expensive. So, like, yeah. you're going to eventually get, like, chickens, I'm assuming. Uh, because I've heard, well, I've heard people that, like, don't even live, like, on big farms, just have, like, their own personal property and, like, have a big yard and they keep chickens. Yeah. Because well, they love, like, the eggs. Like, oh, the, the eggs, eggs are, are all, so much better. Oh, I told better. you, like, uh, before our um, neighbors, yeah, all their chickens got eaten by the raccoon, um, their eggs were, like, awesome. And they yeah. would just give us like eighteen eggs like a week, and like if I don't know if you ever like had like a fresh egg, no, it's legit. It, it's just like a totally different taste. It's like you don't have to add butter or anything. It's just like you taste it. And you're like my whole life has been a lie up to this point. Yeah, it's like really weird, and it ta- it tastes great. Yeah, but like I said, they all got killed. Then maybe eventually get a couple cows, have fresh milk. Oh, cows, no. I don't think we'd ever do cows. I don't think we have enough land for dairy farm. Does your neighbor, did your neighbor have like a hen house for the chickens to go in? So they yeah, yeah, they had like a whole hen house and everything. It was, it's a friend house. It's my parents' neighbors that you drive by when you go yeah, to my yeah. parents' house. There's a chicken coop, like before you make the turn. Yeah, I every time I would go down there, it's like, I'm like, am I going to hit the chickens? Because they're just right there. Well, those are the roosters. Those are not the chickens. That's different. Okay. Not to say that roosters aren't chickens, but they have the chickens... They have, they still have roosters, which actually are kind of like violent. One yeah. time they were like trying to attack Winifred, and the um, <coughs> neighbor came out with a broom and just started lighting them up. <laughs> like literally, it was like slap shot. She was like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> he was like swinging as hard as she can. So the raccoons don't want to eat the cocks because they're violent and mean. I don't think they stand a chance against the cock. Okay, okay. But is a raccoon? That's not a thing on the Chinese calendar, is it? No, no, I don't think. I know it, a I don't cock think a rac- and an ox. I'm an. I know I'm an ox. I'm a snake. You're, you're a year before I'm... me, so you would be. I think you're a dragon. No, I'm not a dragon. You're not a an rat. Ox. Am I a rat? I'll look it up. I'm 84. I'll look up the calendar. Hold on. How many animals are on there? Eight. It's like 12, I think. I think I'm a rat. I haven't been to a Chinese restaurant and read the placemat in a while. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 12 things. animal signs. All right, fire away. 12 animal signs. We've got... What's 84? Uh, the same thing as 96. This one this one I looked up sucks. Hold on a second. Can I get like... Just the... look up the Chinese menu. I'm lo- Shut the fuck up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> look up the Chinese menu. They're placements, not menus. Um, wrap up, 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 up. Here we go. Now we're going to years. Um, see here, rat. You were eighty-eight. Have to fix this. It's fine. Oh my god! Even Wikipedia failed me. All right. Hey Siri, 
What Chinese zodiac sign was born in 1984? Here's what I found on the web for what Chinese zodiac sign was born in 1984. Rat. Have a look. It's rat. I was looking up the whole calendar. I wasn't looking up the whole I thought it was thing. rat. I thought I was a rat. ChinaHighlights.com. Thanks, Siri. There you go. I f- I, yeah, I found one. I'm a fucking it doesn't rat. Matter. It doesn't matter anymore. You dirty rat. You killed my father. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm mistaken. I always wanted to be a... I was going to be a dragon, but when I looked at the Zodiac like for the Cisco? first time, yeah, I was going to be a dragon. Then when I looked at the first time, my dragon's like, nope, I'm a snake. I'm like, fuck, a snake. Crawling around my belly all the time. Welcome to For Your Distraction. Yeah. Welcome back, Adam. Yeah, we're back. We're joined by Farmer Mike. Soon to be. Soon to be Farmer Mike Deloney. Welcome back, Mike. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been uh, maybe six months. See, when you lived in Maryland, I feel like you were on the show more often now that you live here in yeah. the same town. Yeah, that's true, because I think when I came home, it was like everybody was excited. So, like, oh, let's do a podcast. You're in town. But now that I live here, it's like, oh, yeah, he lives here. Hmm. But you're, like, invited, like, a lot, and then you like, just don't. And then you just, invite, right? and then you just don't come. Well, uh, I've never not. I've never said that I was going to come and then not come. True. You, I've just always wanted to come, but my schedule has not worked out. Is, is, my schedule has not afforded me to come. And then the one time we filmed in my basement, and it was oh, a yeah. botched uh, shit show because we had a technical bunch... difficulties. Right? My, yeah, my I don't know if my, it was, was no, my cords were fucked up. These are all brand new cords from that night. I, I actually just bought new cords after that night because the cords they were always messed up, but they have not have failed since. So yeah, and I feel like that episode was like kind of gold because A Town brought that like crazy lady who was like moving to South Carolina. Yeah, to yeah. do she whatever. Was, she was a tons of fun. Yeah, she was a stripper too. So <laughs> you could add your first stripper on the air. Yeah, that would have been great. I mean, we still might get some some cuts out of that. Who knows? Maybe get yeah, some B real. Yeah, she was a trip. I know um, A Town was bummed that he didn't he didn't make the air. I well, mean, because I think he was gonna like listen to it. Did he ever give you a job? He said he was gonna give you a job. I think he has to finish school first. I don't, and yeah, I don't. So even, you can intern. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember his name, and I don't think we have any access to get to know each other. So I don't think he even remembers me. So no, he does. I talked about you this morning. I was like, oh, I went to the driving range with Adam because yeah, we were golfing this morning. Oh, is that who you go with this morning? Yeah, that's what I was golfing with this morning. Okay, I don't know that's what. Does he does he live in the area? No, he lives in Cleveland. Yeah. Well, he lives like in the Cranberry of Cleveland. Is he here this weekend? Like, why don't you just like say, "Hey, come do the show tonight"? He came in town specifically to play golf and go home. Oh, okay. So he came down. Actually, we had a, like a little dude day. We uh, played golf and then we went to Hot Rods. Have you guys ever been to Hot Rods? I have not. Oh yeah, dude, go Rod. to Hot Rods. It was funny. It took him twenty minutes to read the fucking menu. And then he got the hot rod. And, like, I walked in, and the guy was like, what do you want? And I was like, senior hot rod, chips and a drink. Like, I didn't even have to look at the guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, oh, let's see what you got here. And then he, like, read the whole <laughs> menu, and then he ended up getting the, what the you hot got, rod. Yeah. But, and then we went down to uh, the cigar shop and share him. And we actually saw George. He was, like, George actually George was working. there. Yeah, it was funny, too, because he, like... He didn't remember me, because apparently I don't look anything like I used to look in high school. And um, he told me, uh, well, he like asked me my name like three or four times, and he's like, oh my gosh, you're friends with Matt Poole. And I was like, yes. So then everything like kind of clicked together. And um, I see you have some uh, beautiful little Monte Cristos here. Holy shit. Oh, these are legit. These are legit. We were just talking about these in the store, like how hard these are to get. How did yeah. you get those? Mexico <laughs> NAFTA. <laughs> that, no. that is not part of NAFTA. No, it's not. It's not. Um, <laughs> I had family that went to Mexico, and I said I want Cuban cigars and tequila. Not tequila I can buy here. Tequila that's only made there. And they brought me these. Okay. And they of... brought me a bottle of tequila that has no English writing on it. Oh my god! So I'm like, this is there is a worm good. in it? You know, I thought that was a myth, but then I was at like a real fancy Mexican restaurant and they had a worm in it. Yeah, that's that's a real thing. And right. I was like, I was like, what happens if you eat it? And he was like, you get really, really drunk. Sometimes we convince the ladies to eat it. And he gave me this like <laughs> creepy, creepy wink. <laughs> <laughs> but so this guy up. looked like my brother Jack Bird. Like, oh my gosh, what is this? That's not the one they brought me. 
That's a different tequila that has a worm in it. Legitimo de Oaxaca. You told me you used to like speak legit Spanish. Like, do you know what that says? It says legitimate, motherfucker. It says legitimate? <laughs> oh, there is a worm in the bottom. Yeah. So those of you listening, I have this little, a very small bottle of old tequila. It looks like a bottle of hot sauce. Yeah. So it's like the size of a... Yeah, and it has a worm in it. And that's the reason it's never been drunk. So, but you can still drink it with the worm, but you just can't drink. You just can't eat the worm. Yeah, you can eat the worm. I just am a little bit afraid of it. I think if it's you more eat of the, a conversation piece at this point, I feel like if you eat. Oh, oh, this is a mezcal too. This isn't tequila. Did you know that? No. Do you know why the difference is? No, tell me. No, I was. I wanted you to tell me. I was mm-hmm. kind of hoping. Meredith knows the difference. Adam, hmm. what's the difference between tequila and mezcal? Enlighten us. Um. I think mezcal is actually alcohol that's produced from agave plant that's not made in the tequila region of Mexico. So, like, you so can like make bourbon mezcal. to whiskey. Tequila is technically mezcal, however, there's differences in production technique and in types of the agave used. <laughs> tequila is made from single uh, type of agave plant. Um, it can only be produced in the state of Alisco and. In small parts of four other states. What the fuck is this? So it's like it's like bourbon. But that's why your um bourbon's still whiskey. Right? It just has to be in Kentucky. No, no, that's actually not true either. It's not? Yeah, there's only three things that make it bourbon, and I hope I don't screw this up on the air here. You have to use a charred oak barrel one time. You have to use a your mash compar- bill. Your, your comparison was right. For what? When he's, he was take, he's talking about bourbon, like, all tequilas are mezcals, but all, not all mezcals are tequilas. Roger. Gotcha. That's what, yeah, says, well, yeah, that's that's what says here. That's, that's what it says here. Well, just so you know, like, in order for it to be a bourbon, it doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. It just has to have an oak barrel that's charred. Okay. The mash bill has to contain over 50% corn. Okay. And it has to have 80 proof. At least higher? eight, at least eighty proof, or eighty or higher. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say I've had so, bourbon that's a lot higher than eighty. So when we did our bourbon tour, the guy said not all bourbon is made in Kentucky, but he said a hundred percent of good bourbon is made in Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> was this man from Kentucky? I was standing in Kentucky <laughs> okay, yeah. when he told the story. Yeah, we went to uh, the Buffalo Trace. I think I, I told like it. Buffalo Trace oh, a I lot. It. Did you ever try their stag? Yes, uh, their yes. stag junior. So apparently, like. Yes. Like they have like the Stag Junior, the Eagle Rare, and the Buffalo Trace, and they're all this they're all the same mash bill, mm-hmm. but it's like Stag Junior is like w- after they wait so long, they just crack it open and they pour it in the thing, and that's why they have to like individually write what the proof is because it it, de- it varies every single time, and then if you just add water, they just dilute it to get to the eighty percent, and obviously if you're diluting it. You can make a fuck ton more of it because you're just adding water at yes. that point. But they add like good water, you know. It's like triple distilled. Both tequila and mezcal are made from the harvested core of the agave plant. Mm-hmm. However, there that's where the similarities in production end. Tequila is typically produced by steaming the agave inside industrial ovens before being distilled two or three times in copper pots. Mezcal, on the other hand, is cooked inside earthen pits that are lined with lava rocks and filled with wood and charcoal before being distilled in clay pots. That's exactly what the label of this shows them doing. Yeah. It shows a man taking an agave plant We'll have to put a picture of this on our social media, Adam. And he's, like, cooking it on little funny pots. See? So. Yeah, making alcohol is crazy. As far as Farmer Mike is concerned, it would be awesome to make enough hops to, like, actually make your own beer. I wonder if I could do that. I wonder how hard that would be. But it takes more than just hops. You'd need yeast and barley and oats and... Well, we're not going to grow all that, I mean. Exactly. You could just get that from... Forever. Yeah, I wonder if we could take our hops to, like, your shop. Oh, so we went to, where the hell was that called? Brutus. Brutus Brewing. Yeah, Brutus Brewing Company in downtown Sharon. Okay. We went down there. They had, they had some good beers. Um, they had a nice nice little menu. It was dead as a doornail, basically. There was almost nobody there. There was this dude playing the piano, and it was like he was a guy who played, like, jukebox songs, mm-hmm. and... I think he realized that, like, nobody was listening, and he just started playing, like, the most ridiculous songs. 
I think he did um, the Rocky song. Yeah. And then he did uh, a bunch of Elton John songs. But he was just like having a blast. But then when he stopped playing, it like it was like you could hear crickets in there. Yeah, that's when they turned on like the radio and then like or whatever music they were playing on their speakers. And then that was like, all right. Did you Not have a good a beer? Of... Was the beer good? Or... The beer was good, yeah. Was okay, wild. oh, here's a question for you. Have you ever had a nitro beer? Yeah, yeah, we have some in our brewery. Okay, I woke up with the gnarliest headache ever, and I couldn't figure it out because we only had a couple beers. I mean, yeah, I drove we've... home, and this, actually, the Turk and the, the food at Brutus was really good. My turkey bacon avocado <laughs> wrap was fucking awesome, and it was like eight feet long. It, it was, was a pretty of... big one. It's a pretty decent sized one. I had the mozzarella they weren't sticks but they were like i can't remember the hell they were called but they were like mozzarella they're like patty, hockey pucks like hockey but like little patty things they're like mozzarella sticks but in like patty form and then like a side of fries it's like a decent handful of fries that like garlic on it and everything it was freaking legit it was pretty damn good yeah it was good i'm not gonna lie um so i woke up this morning with this like crazy headache and i was like this is ridiculous so then i was golfing with a town this morning and he was like, did you have any nitro beers? And I was like, yeah, I had one. He's like, that's it. That's why you get a headache. And I was like, I didn't know that. So have you ever you ever get a headache when you drink the nitro beers? I honestly don't drink too much of the nitro. Uh, the stuff that we put on nitro are typically like a darker, heavier beer, like a stout or a porter or so a we, coffee. Yeah, we had a milk stout. What, they yeah. have a funny name for it. Blitzen or something? Or yeah, Christmas? Blitzen. It was it was Blitzen. It was called Blitzen. That was that was the first beer I had. I couldn't remember the name was. That was the first beer I had. The Blitzen. See those kind of beers, I like them, <laughs> but I can't drink too much of them. They're oh, really yeah. thick, really heavy. So it was it was a little heavy, but it wasn't too thick, really. It just depends on the style, I guess. I, I don't. I've never had the. Blitzen. It was super smooth. I thought it was tasty. Yeah. I just th- so to answer your question a roundabout way, no. I've never got a headache from drinking too much nitro because I don't typically drink too much nitro. I just have a beer or two. Well, like he had like one nitro, so. Then no, I've never had that issue. I've had it from having too much alcohol. Period. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I've, I don't know about you guys, but like when I get hangovers now, they're like a, like a few days. Yeah, because we're old, man. Yeah, shit, it fucking sucks. <clears throat> yeah, I can't. I can't do what I used to do. We went to the Jimmy Buffett concert, and on the right way home, I was hurting. Oh, really? you! I took a nap on the way home. I was hurting. I Who slept drove home? the entire Kristen. Kristen. <laughs> I slept the entire drive home. She stopped drinking when we went into the show, and so she'd be sober by the time it was over. So she drove home. I was just, I was a wreck. Well, don't you? Don't, you made that up. ridiculous jungle juice. Yeah, that, but it wasn't the yeah. same. I forgot to bring. I listened to that episode and I was like, "God damn it, Scott, <laughs> your fucking fault." I was like, "Why the fuck didn't he text me?" That's okay. Before I'm going, I got there, I'm going to South Carolina next week, so I'm stocking up and bringing it home, so we'll be good for the next few years. Oh, dude, grain alcohol. I remember there was a, a small period in college when we went down to West Virginia to go do something. You. Yeah, were you with us? Yeah, we both the, trips. No, I only went once. We went down Where to the West guy Virginia. was like, you're looking for the 190? Yes. The 190 grain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what and we we're like, uh, yeah. I so was... then he was like, follow me. <laughs> yeah. So then like we get in our car and then, you know, there's like a whole group of us. And then we just met a stranger in the gas station and we're like following him in like the middle of West Virginia. Just following a random pickup truck of this guy who has no teeth. Yeah, no. Nope. And then we like nope. pull into this liquor store because it wasn't like an ABC store. I think uh, West Virginia doesn't do that. West Virginia is just like, like state of Pennsylvania has, uh, they're all wine and spirits. And in like the Carolinas, they're all ABCs. Yeah. In West Virginia, it's just like whatever private liquor store. So, yeah. Yeah. I wonder, um, it was like Jim Bob's booze and lotto tickets. I remember, I remember we got there and his buddy rolled down the window and was like, it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. That's when you get the tire screech off and you're like, huh, oh, that's weird. Yeah, and then we like open the door and it's just like a bunch of sex swings and dildos <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. And we're like, Did just... you say here? <laughs> like, was it this one? You're in the background. <laughs> hey, you guys. Excuse me. Where do you keep your 190? <laughs> and he's just like, oh, how can I help you? Uh, looking for oh. grain alcohol? He's like, oh, right here. Right here. 
What flavor would you like? So we bought that shit, but there was a small period of time where we thought it was cool. We they like do shots of it, like small shots, because they were like, "Oh, if you do a shot of great alcohol, you're gonna go blind." And we were like, "Fucking yeah, MythBusters, you ain't got nothing." <laughs> so we were like just dropping like Jolly Ranchers in there. We'd be like. They grab a deck of cards and be like, uh, what's what color's the back of the card? We're like, red. Oh, you gotta do a shot or one ninety grain. We're like, it's a red deck. And they're like, You gotta do it. And we're like, Alright, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> but yeah, I remember um I thought I was allergic to alcohol for a short period of time because we used to actually put it in our eggnog. And I don't know if you ever made eggnog before, but I've it's... had your dad's eggnog. Yeah, well, did it my, have that? Well, my dad's eggnog is was basically my eggnog because my dad started making me make it as soon as I could stand taller than the counter. Okay, but it's actually the joy of cooking recipe. So I used to have it memorized. I don't have it memorized. All I can tell you is that there's heavy whipping cream in it. And for the longest time, uh, one time I actually had to go to the hospital, like right after uh, like Christmas Eve, because I was having like an asthma attack. But it turns out that I'm lactose intolerant. They figured out I was lactose intolerant, not allergic to alcohol. So, like, I would be at my grandma's house, like, just swallowing, like, gargles full of, like, heavy whipping cream. Like, totally allergic to it. I'm sure that was, like, the biggest relief you ever had. Oh, thank God I'm not allergic to alcohol. Well, I mean, it would be a nice change of pace. (laughs) (laughs) Probably affect my So I can actually eat a block of cheese (laughs) instead of taking shots of Jaeger. (laughs) Yeah, if I had to choose between the be able to metabolize Jaeger or metabolize cheese, I would pick cheese every day of the week (laughs) because I love me some cheese. My cousin is so funny. He was allergic to cheese, and he was sitting there playing video games, just crushing like a family-sized package of cheese curls. And like on the the outside label, it just says 100% real cheese. And I was like, Mark, aren't you allergic to cheese? And he's like, they're so good. <laughs> his, like, throat like, was like, his throat was like <laughs> swelling up and he like couldn't swallow. He's like, I can't stop. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> and he keeps eating them. And I'm like, I remember like snatching the bag away from him. Like, Just taking grab it. an EpiPen, <laughs> stab <laughs> yourself, and go in for more. <laughs> he's like, put these in a blender so I can drink them. <laughs> I want this cheese in my head now. I was like, yeah, well, you think your throat's swollen now. Wait until you take a shit in like six minutes. You're going to drop a fucking Gatorade bottle out of there. <laughs> hey, remember my parents' old house? They used to have that um, uh, that toilet that was like up the stairs. Yes, yes, the and it was like they called it like the throne. So this was in uh, my parents' second house. Actually, the house is still there, like in front of my parents, because we lived you, there. It was the bathroom basement. You walked in the door, and in the room there was like imagine like a like four or five steps up to a toilet that's sitting like middle of the wall in the room. <laughs> yeah. So like, if you were washing your hands and you looked right, you you could stick your tongue out and touch the toilet seat. Like that's how high it was. Yes. Wow. But the reason that the way it was set up like that is because it was down in the basement. You know what I mean? So, like, you had to elevate it so that when you took a shit, the water would go out. Rather than, like, have, like... Gravity, because it would yeah. have to shoot up. Yeah, right? yeah physics, yeah. You yeah. know, all that, all that fun stuff. Well, that's cool, yeah. But you're, I don't know if you remember um, when we were down in my parents' basement, and it was, like, before States, and we were going to, like, drive to Hershey. I remember this, yes. And we watched, like, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yes. And it was, like, you, me, and Dizzle. Did, yeah. And we were, like, oh, yeah, let's just go to States. And I think you were, like, on the phone with your mom. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you don't even go to school there. <laughs> and you were like, I'm fucking going. <laughs> Shut up, mom. Don't worry about it. Don't she's like, fucking worry about it. She's like, well, where are you going to stay? I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> don't, don't worry fucking, about it. Don't fucking worry about it. God, that was so funny. Yeah, because it was, like, the following morning. And then remember, we drove there in the intrigue at, like, 100 miles an hour. And then we went to the game, and then we all kicked it, like, in the hotel. And, um... Remember on the way back, we were like, oh, man, that was... No, no. remember we were driving there? We were like, oh, get off the exit. This is like the This is Force... MapQuest days. Yeah, like, we yeah. had printed out directions. <laughs> yeah, I'm, dri- I'm driving, and they are like... Dale you're... and I are arguing. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, go left. Get off here. No, 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 next one. No, next, get off this left, exit. Right. He's like... <laughs> it was like the barrels with water from every action movie ever <laughs> right in front of us. Yeah. Just get hit. <laughs> and then fi- yeah, and then finally, uh, I don't know if it was you or Dale, but you're like, take the exit, and we're like... <laughs> 
No, Dale was saying take the exit. I was the one, don't take the exit. Take the next one. And Dale and I were arguing. And then finally I looked at him. I'm like, oh, shit, he's right. Take the exit. <laughs> <laughs> like, Skrr. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun. I just trip. imagine the speed music playing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Take the next exit. <laughs> so we get done with the whole trip, and then we drop uh, Dale off. We're like, man, that trip was insane. And, like all this really fun stuff happened. None of it that I can remember clearly. Yeah. Um, but I, I do remember it was a great time. We're like, man, that trip was crazy. And then we, and then Scott was like, ah. So right, Dale lived on a dairy farm. <laughs> And we drove like a quarter mile away from his house, and there were two cows just plowing each other. <laughs> this cow was on top, just like going to town. And I couldn't, like, I couldn't breathe. I was driving, I just stopped the car. Because I was like laughing so hard, because this guy was just like, ah, look at that. Oh, I mean, man. it was an all out bull. It was a bull on top of like, <laughs> yeah, just a mad, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, it was like eight feet wide horns just yelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all for our enjoyment. Oh man, that was that was a funny trip. Yeah, yeah. Well, I heard uh, Kennedy. Uh, they won states again. They won like what? How many? Years? They Three got, in a row now. I heard they have the most state championships in Pennsylvania yeah. ever. It's crazy. But did, did I tell you uh, we took Winifred to Borland's? Pilak and I did. We went to uh, Borland's with uh, two. Like Borland's. Um, yeah, well, you know it doesn't like exist anymore. They only have the par three now. Yeah. So we did the par three course. We took a seven iron, a wedge, and a putter. And I had to putt mostly with Winifred on my shoulders because, like, Winifred, like, was done. Well, she just like didn't want to walk the whole time. I think she walked the first hole, but I didn't realize. You know, it's like I don't know, maybe like a mile or two. It's probably a two mile walk, if that. Really? Yeah. It's probably a two mile walk, but yeah. I mean, she had fun. So I don't know if I ever told this story. You know how my sister used to golf, and my sister's nine years younger than me. To give a little bit of a thing here, and you actually stole one of her golf clubs. I just got it back from you that you moved it back into town. Oh yeah, yeah. the baby three. The baby three. Didn't know that, but anyway, uh, when she was young, like little, like. <laughs> Eight, she was put in golf lessons at Borland, same place where I took them. And at the end of the golf lessons, there was like a par three tournament that anybody got, you got to play for free if you paid for the lessons. Well, the tournament happened to be on a day when my parents couldn't take her. They had something going on. So they said to me, they're like, hey, can you take her, you know, to this tournament, walk around with her? It was like nine holes of par three. Pretty painless, right? Right? Mm hmm. So I don't know what the fuck they taught her in lessons because she was absolutely horrible. She sucked. Well, she was that bad? She was really bad. She was young, but they didn't, I don't know how she got any better. So I'm like trying to help her. Then at one point, midway through, I'm like trying to help her. Like she's swinging and missing, like over and, and over she, again. She like, can't hit the ball. So like, I, she hit sometimes, but just she had swung and missed like three or four times. So I like, set the ball there for. And I'm like trying to line her up, and then I like move the ball again. And as I'm bending over, she goes and she swings, she back swings and hits me right up under my jaw <laughs> with her club. And it hurts so bad. Well, then she swings, completely misses the ball, follows through, <laughs> and hits me on the back of the head on this follow through. <laughs> I'm down. I'm seeing so, so It's like a cartoon with a Tweety Bird around my head. It, it, I was probably concussed after this. And I said, okay, we're done. <laughs> it was just, it was, oh, I got hit right in the head twice, like a, like a three stooges both times. Oh my God. That's yeah. so funny it, that she didn't even hit the ball. Didn't even hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, didn't Where did the ball go? It didn't so, even move. So stealing the baby three, I don't think it caused too much damage. Oh man. No, it's funny because a, that's still to this day. Anytime that there's a shot that would call for like a nice punch out, mm -hmm. my dad's like, "You saw that baby three? <laughs> like literally, like la we just played last week, and he was like, "Where's the baby three at?" I was like, "Oh, I got rid of it." And he's like, "Why? It was gold." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Well, I'm following the rules now. Apparently, you're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to have more than 14 clubs in your bag." And apparently, when I had the baby three, I had like a couple other clubs, and it was like I had like 18 clubs in my bag. 
It was like breaking all the rules. I had no idea that that was a rule. Did you golf in a tournament that like actually counted your clubs? No, my dad was just looked at my bag and he was, because I always told him, I was like, I was like, how do you have so much space in your bag? He's like, oh, I only have 14 clubs. And I was like, what are you talking about? I got almost 20. He's like, you know, it's against the rules. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was rules. Like, he's like, yeah, that's like a big rule. Like, you're only allowed to have 14. I was like, all right, well, take it easy. <clears throat> I have a golf umbrella currently stuck in my bag the wrong way. Oh, fuck It got you. put in, like, nose down. Not by me, by somebody else. I was golfing in a... Wait, how how could it be stuck? Because it opened up. And now, like, when you pull it out, it's, like, stuck in the freaking the grid where the clubs go. The grid. Because it's opened up. It's really hard to explain. Are you off the grid? Some dick friend of mine, we were playing in a, <laughs> an outing. It was a foursome of us, a scramble. And it was kind of a crappy day, a little bit drizzly. So I had a big golf umbrella. And one of them threw it back into my bag the wrong way. And now it's stuck in there. I can't get the fucker out. And that's all I have to say about that. Dude, I... Okay, in my calendar, it says golf with Melanic on yes. September 1st. Yes. Is that a thing? I think it is. Um, it is every year. I didn't golf in it the last two years, and I kind of really want to this year. Are we going to play? Uh, I haven't heard anything else about it, but it happens every year that day. So, Well, I'm, where does it happen at? Uh, Tam O'Shanner. Tam O'Shanner. Who are we playing with? I don't know. Um, I thought your buddy... Uh, Trees yes. was really good yes. at golf. I've played with him twice in the past in this. But Do you I win? Is, is he like win material? He's pretty good. He's a heck of a lot better than me. And no, we didn't win because there's some really good golfers there. F that. What about... Um... But it's it's for a good cause. It's a, a friend of ours, younger brother, passed away unexpectedly. Who's that? A handful of years ago. Can we advertise it on the air? I don't know. No. Edit this out. Bobby Noble. He died? His brother did. His oh. younger brother, Dustin. I played hockey uh, with him. Oh, I thought Bob. Yeah, I didn't know. That Bobby's guy. no. Bobby's alive. He's married. He lives in Pittsburgh. But <laughs> his younger brother is he really alive? Then <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> his brother passed away. Like that's sad. Yeah, it was drugs. But uh, they do a golf scramble in his name for like his foundation scholarship or something. So I, they've done it for like five years. In the first two years I played, and it was a lot of fun. The last two years, one day the weather was crappy, so I didn't go. And the other day, I was, like, out of town. So this year I, like, feel bad. Like, I really want to do it because he was a friend of mine. So you're here now, and you always try to get me to golf. And let's do it. Adam, you want to do it? I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready for the prime time. No, I don't know. I think you guys. I think Donnelly sounds like he wants to win. He's he's like. Yeah, we're not gonna fucking win. That right <clears throat> now, I don't. But. I don't want to win. I was just curious <laughs> if there's some we good could golfers win. There. No, I don't even have my own clubs. It'll, it'll be like well, you know, it's like funny. Three years. Give me like five years, and maybe I'll have my own set of clubs. If I if I continue doing it and enjoy it. So. I have a set of clubs I was gonna give you, and then I forgot that I gave Rupat <laughs> literally two weeks ago. <laughs> And then, but but I have another set of clubs, but it wasn't in my garage. That's why I was late for that as well, because I was like went to go get the clubs, and then I went, and I was like, oh shit, I need to give these Pat. But that's when I found those three clubs. I was like, this will do. Yeah. He said he hasn't played much. Yeah, like, like at all. Zero. Like as in like putt putt. I play putt putt. Yeah, putt putt. You just play putt putt. Putt putt's sweet. I play play-putt. putt. I haven't played like oh. like the only putt putt I played in the past like five years has been like. Bar crawl putt putt, not like go to a. Oh, that's fun course. too. That's fun too. Dude, where's the beach ball crawl? Did we miss it? It's not happening. What? What happened? Some bullshit. I don't know. They they canceled it for whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah, hey, I thought I was. I was like, it was supposed to be. It was to supposed it. to be in August. It was supposed to be like soon, but they canceled it. I know. Right. I was bummed. It sounds like you know, but you can't tell. I, I I don't know the full story. I'm speculating here. Then speculate, man. When yeah. we speculate played, away. When, do you guys remember we played in the snowball crawl? And yeah. It was like never heard of it. There was like fights and like it was kind of bullshit going on. Well, that's what happens when you get a bunch of well, people together. Well, the with charity. Alcohol. That's what I mean. It's a charity that runs it, and they were like, "Nur." The board, I should say, the board voted because of the incidents that happened with your last bar crawl. We don't think we want to be affiliated with it. So. I don't even know if the snowball crawl is happening next February. They're trying to get somebody to pick it up. Uh, Ermy's distributor might pick it up and do it. But Which, on one hand, I'm like, I get that. But on the other hand, I'm also like, 
But you, you they got, made a shit ton you got, of money. You got a lot of money, so like... They made a shit ton of money off You know, that. if few people have to get their teeth knocked out for a lot of money, you know, it just for takes charity. a couple assholes yeah, yeah, yeah. to ruin a good thing for everybody. Yeah, but, I mean, what were, they, what were they expecting? Driving between all the rival gangs in the <clears throat> valley, just literally giving them grain alcohol. Well, not grain alcohol, but... I feel like we did a bunch of shots at the Manicore Club, and then Pelak and Kristen had all in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happened. I just remember that I like that video that that I made. They had so much fun. That was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, that was. I, that was I a hope they do it again because I want to do it. There's probably other bar crawls we could find and do. They do something like that up in Erie. I know because mm-hmm. my old roommate used to like go up there. Erie's a nice place too. You used probably to live there. Probably, well, close by Edinburgh. Yeah. Edinburgh. You ever go to Putin Bay? You heard about this? No. It's up oh. by Sandusky. You're putting me you have on. to You're take a ferry. ferry to get there. I've never been there, but I know about it. I heard it's just like a giant Jimmy Buffett island. Like, literally. Well, hey. So you can wear that shirt. We went to Buffett, so we know what's going on. It'll be fun. I have been to Presque Isle. That place is fun. And I really like Geneva on the Lake. You guys ever been in Geneva on the Lake? No, sir. Isn't that where they have the Blue Streak? What the hell is that? It's little... Conneaut Lake. Does that still exist? Yeah. Really? They still yeah, have dude. the Blue Streak? Dude, you need to take Winifred there. Why don't we take all of our Let's, kids there? Uh, we should. You set up a little date. It's really cheap. Yeah, I'll take my kids there, too. Well, yeah. we can all go. It could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> you got your lady friend. <laughs> Bring your lady friend. It could be fun. So I was going to say. Like, yeah. Bring your girlfriend. It's like a kid. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can't um, say goddamn on the air. <laughs> eh, who gives a shit? Nobody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> that is from Major League. <laughs> for the record, you don't have to say for the record when you're recording. Thank you, Pat. It's on the record, right here. So yeah, Conneaut Lake Park is a very, very old amusement park that, in its heyday, used to be legit. But since then, there's been like a couple fires, and there's been a couple bankruptcies, and it's changed owners' hands a few dozen times. They've sold off some of the rides. It's really gone downhill, but the new owners... No pun intended. (laughs) New owners have started putting money back into it, and the kiddie area, like the kiddie rides, is really nice. And they have the roller coaster, the Blue Streak, which is one of the oldest in the country. What movie was the Blue Streak in? Can you name it? No, Adam. I cannot. Can Scott Malenke oh name God, the yes. movie that the Blue Streak is shown in? I know this. I, I've seen... Ah. It's a baseball film. Funky but loving. <coughs> oh, is it Sandlot? Is it? No. That's Funky but loving, isn't it? No. No? The have to. I say Funky <clears throat> but loving. The have to. I'm going to look this up. I'm just going to put... I don't know Gary Sinise. The kid broke his arm. He threw us 100 miles an hour. Rookie of the year? Rookie of the year. Yeah, right there. It's right there. Looked up. All I do is look the up. The Blue Streak was in Rookie of the Year? Yes, bad a million. Hmm. You don't, you don't sound... Uh... It's been a long time since I've seen Rookie of the Year. I think I remember Rookie of the Year. Did I see that movie? Might have been before my time. 1993. No, it's before <clears> my time. But I was like been into cartoons and stuff like that. So if it wasn't a cartoon, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to watch this. Oh, guess how many stars Rookie of the Year got? <laughs> oh, you know the kid from Rookie of the Year was the kid who banged that chick in uh, American Pie. Yeah, it is. I know you mean Thomas Ian Nicholas. Yeah, he's from American Pie. Just six years later, he was banging the hot chick. Just Chris, he looks exactly the same. <laughs> he didn't get any taller. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? He was in that movie Walt before Disney, yes. and I hated that movie. Did you like it? I would have thought you would have been a little bit more open minded and realized that it was terrible because he's a terrible actor. All he I'll knows is you, throwing uh, fastballs and banging Tara Reid. So really, your entire career? Okay, that qualifies you to be Walt Disney. <clears throat> really, the production value Dude. on that movie was very low. Hello? It was like a made-for-Netflix movie. No. Yeah. It was, I would say it's made for PBS. Well, maybe. It was not in the theaters. So right there. It wasn't in the theaters? It was, no, it was It was the guy from American Pie, <clears throat> Rookie of the Year, and Napoleon Dynamite. 
Oh, that fucker was in it. <laughs> he was Napoleon Dynamite. Was was Roy Disney in it? Oh, what's that kid? What's the guy's name from Napoleon Dynamite? Uh, it was, I don't, the, while you're looking that up, um, I was watching a. Um, I don't know how this came up on my YouTube, like recommended for you, but um, he was on Letterman, and he was telling. I guess like it came up like right after the movie came out, but I guess he was like playing Halo online. With, John like, Hader. John Hader was like playing Halo online, and they're like, "Hey man, like you sound like that guy from Napoleon Dynamite." He was like, "Shut up." <laughs> and they're like no you like really sound like him and then he was like well i am him and they're like no you're not and he's like yeah it's it's me and they like started asking him like all these weird questions like oh when's your birthday when's this or when's that and then he was like as i started answering Gosh. the questions he was like this is kind of weird like why do they know so much about me but i, I just thought it was weird so that is <laughs> imdb pulled up they're like you fucking liar you just have the imdb pulled up too you remember for a while there in high school where like like famous people would do something and be like, Oh yeah, that's my cousin. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, before before the internet could like totally debunk yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, before before smartphones, it's yeah. like you'd be like, Oh yeah, well he was at my family reunion, right? You know, he's like married to one of my cousins. I moved to Oakland Manor and I tried to tell everybody that Patrick Swayze was my uncle. That's what it was. <laughs> Patrick Swayze was your uncle. Yeah, I told Your every- uncle passed away, I heard. I know he did. That's super sad. It was very Roundhouse. sad. Roundhouse. Yeah, man. I said, I told Favorite every- Patrick Swayze movie on three. One, two, three. Wait, wait, Point wait, Break. Wait, wait, wait. Not Point Break. Tiger Warsaw. Tiger Warsaw. <laughs> Do you have one? Point Break might be the only Swayze movie I've ever seen. Really? Really. You didn't see Roadhouse? You didn't see Ghost? That is right. Saw Ghost, Demi Ghost Moore? did exist, but I probably wouldn't put Ghost on my like favorite. Like, the most... like Probably the best part of that movie is whenever that asshole gets killed and then like the demons drag him down to hell. Because we're like, yeah, get his ass. Yeah, that guy was a typecast 90s bad guy. Yeah, he was. It was like as soon as he came on the set. Come on. All right, Guilty Pleasure. Dirty Dancing's pretty good, too. I like Dirty Dancing. I like Dirty Dancing. Oh, what about Red Dawn? I like Pratchett. Red Dawn gives me a huge war boner. I like (laughs) it. Come on. I don't think I ever saw Red Dawn. You've never Dawn. seen Red Dawn? I like Patrick Swayze when he did the SNL skit with uh, Chris Farley. Oh, uh, yeah, the Chip and Dale Chip and I, I did like that. That was, that was so funny. <laughs> that was great. Chris Farley. That guy died, too. They're yeah. both dead. What the fuck? They're both dead. Yeah. But, like, Chris Farley went out partying on drugs and shit. Patrick Swayze had, had cancer. cancer. Yeah. Flavin things up that, end, that ends the, the depressing part of the podcast. Flavin things up, Adam. Yeah, so. I thought you guys had an agenda today. What's your agenda? Are, what are we, we saving the about? agenda for next week? I mean, we might as well save the agenda for next week. We're almost like, it's hitting that end point. We're almost out of time. <laughs> We're almost out of time. Um, have you guys heard of the iFetch before? iFetch? You ever heard of the iFetch before? It's it's a it's the laziest piece of technology that's like ever been made where you get it so that your dog it's basically made for like I think medium to small sized dogs medium to small yeah and it's like it's basically just uh you know those uh what are those uh machines balls. that shoot balls like baseballs and shit like that it's like a miniature version of that where the dog takes a tennis ball Puts it in this hole, waits a couple seconds, and it shoots it like out. a pitching machine. Yeah, it's yeah, that's that's the word for it. pitching yeah. machine. It's like a miniature pitching machine for like little dogs and shit like that. I saw that and I was like, that's like the laziest thing I've ever seen. It's, I'm kind of like, why don't you go like take your dog out and play fetch with it yourself? Any thoughts? It's 2018, man. It's progress. Uh, I think that's lazy, personally. But <laughs> one thing I will say is my buddies down in Baltimore, they have a dog, and what they do is they have their, like, cell phones, and they have, like, an app. It's almost like an Xbox, like, TV or whatever. Yeah. Like, hooked up. So they can, like, FaceTime their dog. So they, like, you know, hey, Fido, blah, 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 whatever, blah, 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 and then they hit a button, and then, like, a treat shoots out. Get the Be- fuck out of here. Because they're, like, they're not, like, home all the time. So, like, they have the ability to, like, FaceTime. So, like, their face pops up on the TV, and the dog goes nuts. And then they, like, chat with it, blah, 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 and it, like, releases some of the anxiety. 
I don't know. I don't fucking like animals. I'm terrible with. I'm terrible with animals. That's insane. You can't I like say, animals. You can't but say you love innovation, though, Scott. You can't I do say, love innovation. You can't say that. I do love innovation. Why? Because you're completely against like self checkouts. I like am that. against self checkouts. You can't say oh, you love innovation then. I am against self checkouts. I stand by that. I just think it's taking people's jobs, and I hate them personally because I can't fucking work them. All right. I, no, fuck you. Because last time we had this conversation, I said you just don't like them because you can't work them. Like, no, I can work them. I can work them just fine. What? It's not why I don't like them. And no, then no, I was like, no, no that's not what you I said before. In Baltimore, they have these things. Where it's like they give you a you, when you get your basket, you get a gun. Every time you put something in your basket, you shoot it with your gun. Well, that's America. Shoot it with your gun. Well, no, it's like a little. Give people I know, guns. I know, yeah, just it's a scanner I'm, gun. I'm kidding. I know. So then you like I know what you mean. Right? I know and then you mean. when you go to check out, what you do is you just shoot your gun at the thing, and then it tells you a price. And then you pay, and then you bag your groceries. And then on the way out, they, they have somebody there who has a receipt, and they like kind of spot check. And then you go. I thought that was pretty slick. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't do like more of that shit. But like, I'm all for the self checkouts. When I was in them. California, I was in San Jose, I went in the Amazon store, and it was like had everything, <coughs> like like Amazon does, like, like a Walmart. Like, but it had like it wasn't as big as a Walmart, but they had like books. And they had like fruit and drinks. There was no one working at that store. You had your phone, and you go up to a thing, and you tap your phone, and it charged you, and you left. It was nuts. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was taking people's jobs though. It was the, taking people's jobs. The thing is, like you, like I remember you, you telling that story on the podcast mm-hmm. before. But there was, you guys know Amazon Prime Day happened recently. Okay. Prime, Prime, Day, Prime Day happened. It was like the big sales. There was a big story about all these Amazon warehouse workers going on strike on and basically trying to get people to not to basically get people to not buy anything on Prime Day to kind of stick it to Amazon because they have like shitty working conditions right, yeah. and they don't get paid a lot of money. And I'm thinking about that as like so that like your experience must have been like an isolated incident. Where you said there's like nobody there because there's a shit ton of Amazon workers I saw in this news story. No, but those they Amazon the... workers in the factory. Yeah, not in the store. They weren't in a store. They're in the warehouse. And I'm sure I didn't see it, but I'm sure there had to be somebody coming and stock the shelves. At there's some point. a big yeah. warehouse in Baltimore where a lot of people work, and I think they get like I don't know. Are they I know aren't they work... talking about opening one in Pittsburgh? Uh, you're talking about a warehouse. You're talking about their headquarters. Oh, Ed, I don't know. What's headquarters the is what they were looking for. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yes, yeah, so you know, like Google's headquarters is like in Silicon Valley. It's in San Jose where I was. Yeah, yeah, and it's ridiculous. The um, uh, Amazon headquarters is out in Seattle, right? But then they they want them to have another location, and my vote is Eastern Ohio, and or West Middlesex, PA, because our property values will triple. It'll be awesome. That's my thought. They would or never. Pittsburgh. They would never do it in West Middlesex. No, never in a million years. Why not? Never, ever, ever. Why not? Ever. Land is cheap, and they got to build a fuck ton of like warehouses. Never. Would They'd they have to build a fuck ton of everything because oh. you need to house so many people. You need to feed so many people. You'd have to entertain so many people. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to build. Yeah, all well, of we were that. just at Brutus, and there was nobody there. Okay. And we were just at the Louvre. There's nobody there. We were okay. just at Stone Church. There's nobody there. There's nobody anybody. There's but nobody they're going to want to be at a place where those places already but not exist. Everybody, but not everybody yeah, but that I, works at the warehouses drink, though. So you're talking about bars. Not everybody that works there drinks. Every, I guarantee everyone drinks and eats. Yes. They no, all, yeah, but they all drink soda and they eat food. They everybody, eat food. you have to eat and drink. Yeah, but they're going to gonna go to like a restaurant. They're not going to... like the, All the places you mentioned serve like alcohol. They're like alcohol places. They're going to well, go... No, go they're a lot of people drink out of them. They're a lot of people. Okay, okay, but like Brutus Brewing Company, their menu was super limited. It was a bar restaurant. It's a brewery. They don't have to have a it was full a, menu. It was yeah, a, but what about mascarella? They had no. They had no chicken on the menu. They had like packed. they had one small chicken item on the menu, and that was it. They had no chicken on almost no chicken on the. Menu. They had no seafood on the menu. They had none of that shit. They would go to like a restaurant. What about combines? Combines would be lined up the door. I'm telling you, okay. Restaurants aside, what are people gonna do? There's no professional yeah. sporting teams. There's no concert venues. There's in order no to yeah, in order to Broadway do anything, shows. they'd have to like come here, live here, and then travel somewhere else. Yeah, you'd stuff. have to travel. What if are you... they called? The scrappers? Really? What are those guys over there in Youngstown? Yes. There's a minor league baseball team and a minor league hockey team in Youngstown. Yeah. And are they winners? They got the YSU down the road. 
They got uh, immaculate golf locations around here. There are stones throw from cl- from the brownies. There are stones throw from the. So they have a minor league football team too. Okay, <laughs> minor league football team. I I just think they would never do someplace like West Middlesex or Youngstown, Pittsburgh. Maybe I would say Pittsburgh because there's things, there's stuff you you want to. If you're gonna create so many jobs, you're gonna need stuff for these people to do. Yeah, and they're gonna do their job. And then they're going to kick it at Stone Church. <laughs> hey, I, I love the idea of it. It, it. Sound economics, but it's also a pipe dream. Well, yeah, I mean, they're not... <clears throat> I think they're going to go to Texas. I think they're going to go to yeah, Austin. That's what I was thinking, too. Austin seems like the <coughs> logical choice of that thing. What Why? Is, Why the wh- fuck's Austin Because about? Austin is, like, the big up-and-coming of, like... Austin is the technology. It's the like South. It's, <laughs> like, it's like literally, like, a tech place. Like, it Why? is... Because that's what there is. That's what but there is. But why is it there? Why did it pop up there? Because University of Texas is there. Is that why? There are a lot of well, either Austin or like Houston. I guess the There's whole a region lot of just like, has like a lot of like tech, tech and production companies and shit like that that work down there. But why did they establish there? Because well, like. A lot of, like, some of those, like, some of, like, the tech and production companies, like, or at least some of the production companies I know of, like, st- were people that, like, lived there. Like, one of the bigger production companies that is down there right now, I've talked about before, is Rooster Teeth. And all those people lived in, they were, they born and raised in Texas. They lived in Austin. Like, now they pr- they have, like, a few hundred employees to their thing, and it's, it's big down there because they, they were just there. Well, you know, Google came to Pittsburgh. So it's not unreasonable to think. I didn't. Say, it's not unreasonable. Yeah, no. That Amazon would come to Pittsburgh. Actually, I think Google has those self-driving cars I see around Pittsburgh. Did you see those things? <laughs> I saw one self-driving car, but there was somebody sitting in the passenger or the driver's seat. But I don't really. I didn't. saw one, and there was nobody in the fucker, and it was just stopped at a red light next to me. I was on the south side. And I look over and I'm like, son of a bitch. It might have not been Google. It might have been Uber. I'm imagining it you. It might have been Uber. But in like, uh, well, uh, Pelak was telling me that I guess Uber like was on board with uh, Carnegie Mellon. And then like they were like kind of working in like conjunction. And then Uber offered like all the computer science guys like awesome jobs, like great benefits. And basically just like siphoned out all of the intelligence from that department. So, like, Carnegie Mellon was like, fuck you, we're never working with you again because you, like, took all of our staff. And now Uber's having, like, a hell of a time, like, getting things to work. Because they didn't realize that, like, a lot of the resources there were more than, you know, just those people that they hired. Yeah. Good show, guys. Hey, good show. Good show. Adam, well, are you going to tell the people how they can get a hold of us? If you to want to get show? a hold of Four Distraction, email us, distraction at gmail.com. Search for our social medias, Facebook and Twitter. Search Four Distraction at Podcast FYD. We're on SoundCloud and iTunes. Search for Distraction. Like us, rate us, comment on us, share us with your friends. The only way we're going to grow is if you guys help us grow. We're also a member of the Be Real Podcasting Network. Head over to Podbean and search for Movie Guys Podcast. That is our official, unofficial hub of the Be Real Network. Thank you, Deloney, for coming Almost on. Almost Farmer Mike. Yeah, you going to come back next Mike. week? Oh, yeah. Maybe Standing I'll, invitation. Yeah, maybe I'll have a farm by then. Maybe. We'll have to, we'll have to ask you that.